Hi, I'm Emily Anderson, here to walk you through the steps of completing the Stream Habitat Assessment Form, an important component of the South Carolina Adopt-a-Stream Freshwater Protocol. This habitat assessment should be performed at least one time per year to record any major changes happening in the stream. You can even conduct this assessment on your phone or tablet while in the field. Conducting this assessment with other volunteers allows for better shared observations and discussion of your habitat conditions. The habitat assessment includes all of the observations made each monitoring event plus assigns a numeric score, 1 through 10, to different described conditions of your stream corridor. Together, these conditions rate your stream as poor, fair, good, or excellent. Different events in your watershed can affect this score, both good and bad. A riparian planting, for example, may improve your score. On the other hand, impacts of our increasing frequency of large storm events or growing impervious surfaces in your watershed may decrease your score. In all of these scenarios, having a recorded measure of health will allow local community leaders and scientists to react to protect the river corridor, which is so important in preserving water quality and ecosystem health. Let's get started. First, you must know your stream widths. I'm Katie Callahan, assisting in taking this measure. The length of stream you will assess for your site is 12 times the bankful channel width, meaning the width from one bank to the other. Your site should ideally fall in the middle of this reach, unless something is greatly modifying the stream, such as a bridge. For all parameters, assume leaf out or your most shaded conditions, and always conduct this assessment at normal base flow and not after a rainstorm. All of the assessed conditions have excellent graphics to help you most consistently rate the stream. We will walk through each. Our first condition is epifaunal substrate, or the observation of submerged natural materials. Here we see submerged roots, some woody debris and leaf packs, cobble, but not in abundance. Embeddedness is only assessed in rocky bottom streams, as it rates how much sediment is clogging pore spaces between gravel, cobble, and boulders where they exist. If your stream does not have a rocky bottom, skip this element. This stream does not have gravel or cobble, but it does have some fine sediment deposits. Many of these conditions are a numbers game, and Riffle Run Pool is certainly that. A riffle is an area where water is traveling over rocks and disturbances. A run is the straight section of flow. A pool is an area of the stream that is 1.5 times the average depth of your stream. Count which of these are present within your reach. In the 240-foot reach, there are several natural series of riffles, runs, and pools. Sediment deposition evaluates how sediment is changing the stream's morphology. Are there sandbars or islands forming? And how stable are they? This stream has no islands or growing sandbars giving it a 10, unlike these examples. Aquatic vegetation seeks to identify nutrient enrichment in your stream through signs of algae or a green tint to the water. In some streams, algae may be very visible, giving your site a low score for this element. If algae is not present, for instance in the winter, are the rocks slippery? While you may wish to skip some components and return, for instance, in warmer months to assess your reach again, never give a zero. There is no green tint to our creek here or algae growing. Moss on the rocks is present due to the full sun conditions at our stream, but the moss and rocks are not slippery. Channel alteration considers not only has the stream channel been modified, but has the stream recovered from these historical modifications. In many cases, these changes can be quite obvious. For example, is your stream the width of a bulldozer? There is no evidence of alteration in this channel, though there is in our surrounding area here. Channel sinuosity is only recorded for more sandy substrates. In rocky bottom streams like this one, we would skip this element. All streams naturally meander, 
though this is often restricted due to urbanization. The remaining factors are scored separately for one bank from the other. For this assessment, left and right banks are determined facing downstream as indicated in the protocol. Bank stability is an incredibly important component to rate so as to identify potential riparian buffer initiatives for your stream. All rivers should naturally have access to their floodplain. Floodplains act like brakes on a bike, slowing down river flow during major storms and spreading the water out, perhaps saving downstream properties from flooding. Without access to its floodplain, river flow can be hungry, where the energy of the flow is eating away at its own stream bottom, further cutting off the river from its floodplain. This is a part of urban river syndrome and is easily observed in many rivers in urban corridors, though not only occurring in urban areas. Vegetation overhanging stream edges is present, but due to the lack of trees, it's not covering across the stream width. Vegetative protection rates another critical parameter protecting your stream bank and its stability, as well as the reach's biodiversity. It's useful to know your area's common invasive species, such as kudzu, Chinese privet, Japanese knotweed, mimosa tree, and tree of heaven. Stream banks dominated by a few invasive species would receive a low score, whereas stream banks with a mix of trees, shrubs, and grasses will receive a higher score. All of our stream bank surfaces are covered by diverse vegetation, with the exception of trees, affecting this score. Riparian buffers are one of the easiest cheapest, most natural ways to protect your river's health, supporting the wildlife that live within and around waterways. This assessment condition simply looks at the width of the riparian buffer compared to the width of the stream. Trails and small disturbances within the buffer might not prevent the buffer from doing its job. However, a trail right along the edge of the stream bank would equate to a significant disturbance due to the pressure the trail puts on the bank. Anything putting pressure right along the shoreline, including mowing the buffer zone, is a significant disturbance. More than 60 feet of healthy native riparian buffer exists on both sides of the stream, with one side having a transmission tower in its riparian zone. Of course, trees are limited within each side's riparian zone. We have just gone through the visual observations that are important for both tracking disturbances and changes within your reach, as well as gauging impacts on your reach's health from activities upstream. In many cases, repairing problems at your site requires a larger perspective of what's happening in your watershed. These data are important measures for local communities, watershed groups, and others to take action. We wanna hear from you. When you have questions on what you're seeing, Document this in the South Carolina Adopt-A-Stream database and send an email to an SCAAS state team member. Your data has power to inspire initiatives in your greater watershed.